Turn your Bibles, preferably your King James Bible or Geneva or a Webster's. Yeah, the dictionary guy. He uh, actually made a, a Bible based on the King James and updated the language. But get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Job, chapter 38. This is going to be part two of the Iron Kingdom. And this is going to be, it's not a salvational issue, but if you want to understand the Bible and you want to understand the really the deep stuff, you've got to spend a lot of hours studying because there's a lot of garbage out there. Uh, when I first came to the Lord, I bought some study Bibles and then I started finding things that were wrong in them. And I basically threw most of them away. I mean, basically threw them in the garbage. Uh, and I just got a plain, a plain Bible, just no nothing. And uh, that's what I started doing, just, you know, large print, whatever. So let's read Job 38. And then we're going to have the Bible explain the Bible. Your modern Bibles that are based on the Catholic Vatican's manuscripts, and if you trust the Vatican and the Pope, well, that's up to you, but all the modern Bibles are based on the Catholic manuscripts. Only the Webster's, only the King James, and only the Geneva are based on the Greek majority text. And part of the New King James Bible is part Protestant Bible and part of it's Catholic. So I don't trust the New King James. All right, so Job chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man. He's basically telling him, go put your pants on like a man. For I will demand of thee and answer thou me. In other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask of some questions and I want you to answer me. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the, of the earth? In other words, where were you when I created the heavens and the earth, right? Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or what? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? And if those that are into carpentry know what a line is, a line is to keep your uh, building straight. If you take a string and stretch it out, and you follow it, and your beginning and your end point are straight, your your and you follow the line, it'll everything will be straight. So. Or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And I did another study. The cornerstone was Christ. At least that's what he said. Verse 7. Now, remember, in verse 4, the Lord's talking about where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Okay? When God created the earth, he's asking Job, where were you? All right, let's go back to verse 7. The subject hasn't changed. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Verse 7. When the morning stars, morning stars, keep that, in mind, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Keep that in mind, too. All right, so where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Okay? Very important points. It's talking about when the earth 
was created. The morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, let me ask you a question. Your King James Bible says that the foundations of the, uh, the earth was at the foundation of the earth. The morning star sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. So evidently the morning stars and the sons of God came before the earth, before the earth was created. Otherwise, how could they shout for joy when the foundations of the earth were created? I mean, think about that. The sons of God and the morning stars had to have come first for them to be able to sing and shout for joy when the earth, when the foundation of the earth was made. Okay? When the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. Now, who are these sons of God? And who are these morning stars. Who are these stars? Now, in Revelation 22, 16, we read Jesus speaking, words of Christ in red. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, Jesus is the morning star. He is the only begotten Son of God. Okay? The modern Bibles delete only begotten Son. See, he was begotten, not created. There's a big difference. I just found something very interesting, something I've read many times, but I just kind of connected it. Turn to the Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you, for ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now check this out. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation? Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation? What in the world are they talking about? Well, we're going to find out. That's a very, very prophetic statement there. There are certain men who crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. God ordained people to condemnation? I thought Jesus died for the whole world and God loves everybody. When you read this, you know, and if this Jude is who I'm thinking of, the brother of James... And if it's the one I'm thinking of, James and Jude grew up in a household with a guy named Jesus. They had a father named Joseph and a mother named Mary. They grew up with Christ, if it's who I'm thinking of. Uh, you got to realize something. Sometimes my Bible memory stuff goes back 20 years. It's hard to remember everything. For there are are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our god into lasciviousness haven't you ever heard that before once saved always saved eternal security 
All you got to do is believe on Jesus Christ. You don't have to repent. Don't repent. All you got to do is believe on Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Just say a 30-second sinner's prayer and just keep living the way you're living now, and you're saved. And God can't throw you in hell. So if you want to be a lesbian witch or a hitman for the mafia, no problem. Keep your keep being, you know, just as long as you believe in Jesus. Don't you hear that today? I do. I hear that all the time. You know, and I believe in eternal security. I mean, I, I really do, but I have to think, you know, just because somebody says a sinner's prayer doesn't mean they were saved. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Well, I'm paraphrasing. You can't, unless you're born again, you know, just because you say a sinner's prayer doesn't mean you're born again. Right? Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think a lot of these Hebrew Roots people do this. I think they deny Jesus Christ. Because where does it say Yeshua in the New Testament? It doesn't, right? Uh, verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Listen carefully. And the angels. Ah. Remember, he's talking about men that crept in unawares. Now he's talking about the angels. And the angels which kept not their first estate. Who? Satan's angels. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Ooh. And the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Now, there's two ways you can look at strange flesh. One, sodomy, of course. Men with men. But there's another one that... Um, the uh, satanic churches will fight to the death. And that's where the fallen angels in uh, intermarried with the women and had giants. Would that be strange flesh? I think so. So, and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now remember, they were talking about angels here, right? And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the, angel, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Why are they talking about angels and they're talking about going after strange flesh? Are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Hmm. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil... So he's talking about the angels, the angels that fell. Now he's talking about the devil. The subject really hasn't changed, has it? No. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the, bo uh, about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. And those things, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Isn't that interesting? They bring up Cain. And ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. 
Oh, uh, let's see. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you. Do you know you're we shouldn't let these evil people feast with us in our churches. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Yeah, these people, they live among us without any fear at all because Christians are, oh, God just loves everybody. Oh, God, Jesus is nothing but love. Love, 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 and peace, and love. Yeah, just remember that same God of peace and love rained fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah and also drowned everybody except for Noah and his family in the days of the ark, right? That's the God of love and peace. It's the same, same God. I've actually had people tell me the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament is two different gods. Maybe you have two different gods, but I don't. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead. Why are they twice dead? Dead in the body and dead in the spirit? Dead in the spirit, dead in the soul, twice dead. There's a physical death and then there's a spiritual death. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars. Remember we were talking about the morning stars? Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of of darkness forever ordained of old to this condemnation didn't we just read that a little while ago yeah we did what was it verse 4 uh, verse 14 and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of the saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaketh great, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Turn on 8 TBN, you'll hear people speaking great swelling words. Great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who will walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Yeah, we should have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto them that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, Dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Stars, people. Stars. So, who are these other stars? Revelation 1 and 16. Let's, let's talk about stars, the morning stars, right? Revelation 1 and 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Let's skip to Revelation 1 and verse 20. Instead of 16, let's go down to 20, right? Words of Christ in red. Jesus is going to explain to you what the seven stars are in his hand, right? In the hand. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, 
the seven stars, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The Bible explains the Bible, unless, of course, you got a modern version. Then they change everything. Then you can't make these, you can't reference everything. It doesn't explain to you. Okay? Uh, let's see. All right, let's take a look. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing a birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Remember that, a great red dragon. A great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon its head, and his tail and his tail, the tail of the dragon, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So the dragon's tail drew a third part of the stars from heaven and did cast them to the earth. The fallen angels, people, come on. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay? And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay? So, um... So... Let's see. All right, so the dragon drew a third of the stars and cast them to the earth. Actually, they were cast out, right? Now, if you have any doubt these stars are angels, may I read Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20 again? The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Stars and angels. Okay. Now, who's this great red dragon? All right, who's the dragon? The Bible interprets the Bible. At least the King James does. The modern versions don't. And people will tell you, oh, the older and better, more accurate manuscripts Use the new modern Bibles because you won't make the connection here between the, dra the, the dragon. Who's the dragon? Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. Where? He was cast out of heaven to the earth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is he an old serpent? Because that serpent was in the Garden of Eden talking to Eve. Yes, it was not a snake that was talking to Eve. And the old dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. The Bible tells you the dragon is the devil and Satan. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels, the stars, and his angels were cast out with him. Does it get any plainer than that, people? No. All right, Revelation 12 and verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Now, this is not really relevant to the discussion, but it's worth it's worthy of mentioning anyways. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was wroth. 
which means angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, her children. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, if you're a Jew and you keep the commandments of God, dragon's not angry at you. And, and if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, but you don't keep the commandments, the devil's not mad at you. Hey, if you're a lesbian witch and you believe and have the testimony of Jesus, well, that's fine. But, you know, but he's angry with those which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. When you do both those things, yeah, the dragon's going to be mad at you. Matter of fact, the the church people will be mad at you too. And no, I'm not a Torah keeper. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But they asked him, what was the great commandments in the law? And he said, love the Lord. He says, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these hang all the law and the prophets. But the Torah keepers want you to keep 600 and something laws that they don't keep either. Instead of having the testimony of Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed the Torah keepers, the Hebrew roots people, the Messianic Jews, they talk a lot about the feasts, they talk about jubilees, they talk about shemitahs or whatever it is. All these little obscure little things, wearing tassels and blue on their clothing. But you don't hear a lot about, uh, you don't hear a lot about grace and salvation. And you don't hear a lot about the things that Jesus did. Like when he, you know, you hear a lot of, they, they, they talk a lot about tithing. They don't talk about grace. You know, it just it makes you wonder. They they minor they minor on the important things, the major things, and on the, the important things they 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 totally almost totally ignore. It's it's something, you know? All right, uh the dragon. Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, Michael that is, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. All right, so what did we learn? We learned Jesus is the morning star, the only begotten Son of God. The morning stars, the stars are, are angels, okay? And a third of them got kicked out of heaven for following the dragon, Satan, the devil. All right? So what about the sons of God in Job 38? All right, time to refresh your memory. Let's go back to Job 38. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Let's skip. Uh, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together. The angels, people. When God created the earth, the morning stars, the angels sang together. And when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The sons of God. Now let me ask you a question. When you're talking the Old Testament... Okay, when you're talking the New Testament, 
When we're born again of the Spirit, we're called the sons of God. Period. Absolutely. But when you're talking the Old Testament, well, for example, Jesus Christ is called the only begotten Son of God. Did you know that Adam, as in Adam and Eve, he's called a Son of God because after all, who is his father? God. He didn't have a, a mother. Well, you could technically say Mother Earth, but that's a witch thing, and I, I think I'm going to pass on that because the Bible doesn't say Mother Earth, but, but God's his father. But what about the other sons of God? Now, people, what scares me, I shouldn't say scare, but what concerns me greatly is that they're going to, these King James so-called believing churches and pastors will try to tell you that the sons of God were just godly men, like in Genesis 6. But the thing is, it says here, it's talking about the creation of the earth. It's talking about the morning stars and all the sons of God shouting for joy. Now, I ask you a question. How, what came first? The angels or the earth? Well, you know what? Let's go. Let's go to Genesis. According to Job 38, the angels, the stars, the morning stars, shouted for joy when, at the creation of the earth. Did God create the angels on the first day? Not according to the Bible. Second day, no. Third, no. Fourth, no. Fifth, no. Sixth, no. The seventh day, absolutely not, because it was a Sabbath, Sabbath day and God rested from his labors. So when, according to Genesis, were the angels created? You know, you can read Genesis 1, chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? Um, he made light. And um, let's see. He made the waters. Made the heavens. So... Let's see, and then he, uh, you know, made the, the trees, the grass. All right, let, let's take a look. I'm, I'm going to skip through this because I don't want to make this a 20-hour study, you know? All right, uh, Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, let's see, verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Uh, let's see, and verse 5, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Did, were angels created there? No. But the earth was, um, because it said, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. All right, let's go to verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Um, let's see. Verse 8, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Anything about angels in there? No. Uh, let's see. Verse 9, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself, upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, after his kind. And God saw it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Anything about angels there? No. 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser night to rule the night. He made the stars 
also. Now, you could argue and say, well, this is these are angels. But if they're angels, how could they be shouting when the earth was created? So is he talking about angels, star angels, or is he talking about stars as in other suns? Personally, I believe it's other suns, as in sun in the sky, bright, S-U-N, not S-O-N. Uh, he made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the dark night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, and God said, okay, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. All right, uh, let's see, and then uh, verse 20. All right, and then he's making the, the fowls, the fly in the air. God created whales and every living creature that moveth. Uh, and the waters brought forth abundantly after the kind, and every winged fowl. Um, let's see. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. All right, so we're on the fifth day. Uh, verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after his kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now this, we just read it in verse 23, and the morning and the evening, the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So what comes after the fifth day? The sixth day. I've had people argue with me about this. But I think this is the sixth day. Because six seems to always come after five, right? You know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I, I know, it, it seems stupid, but I've had people say, no, no, no. But, all right, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Plural. Did you notice that? Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on, upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Uh, in the image God created, let's see. I'm sorry, I lost my place. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Uh, let's see. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the, uh, in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me, to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air, to every living thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So I think God created uh, Adam and on the sixth day. Anything about angels? No. No, there's nothing in there about angels were created. Well, guess what? After the sixth day, what comes next? The seventh day. The seventh day is the Sabbath. God rested on the seventh day. He didn't make nothing on the seventh day. He kicked back and enjoyed everything that he had made. But did you catch that? Verse 31, And God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. Evidently, Satan had not fallen yet. Satan was created good. And I think it's in Ezekiel 31 and Isaiah 14. Let me check. I don't want anybody to call me a liar. Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah 14. All right, so everything that God made up to uh, day six was, was perfect. And I was wrong. It wasn't Ezekiel 31. It was Ezekiel 28. Let's read a portion of that real quick. Verse 11. 
Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now, remember, there's, there's two kings of Tyrus. There's an earthly king, and there's a spiritual king. Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of beauty, I'm sorry, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. What earthly king was in Eden, the garden of God? No earthly king. You know, it was Adam and Eve, right? And the serpent. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, and the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was created in thee in the day that thou wast created. The only man that was created was Adam. All the rest were born. But this one, who was in Eden, was created. Think it might be Adam? Read verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Do you know that Satan was an anointed cherub that covered the mercy seat of God, the throne of God himself? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. What human has ever walked upon the holy mountain of God? And people will tell you this, this is an earthly king. Bah humbug, as Ebenezer Scrooge would say. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee though, so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Remember in uh, Genesis on the sixth day, God said everything was good. Everything was perfect. Everything was good. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Gross wicked sin. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Doesn't the Bible declare there was war in heaven? Isn't there violence? When there's a war, isn't there a violence? Oh, yeah. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Wow. Wow. You know, the Bible explains the Bible if you'll just let it. So everything was perfect. Even Satan was created perfect. And when Adam was created on the sixth day and God rested on the seventh day, guess what? Satan hadn't fallen yet. The fall happened sometime from the time that, from Genesis 1 to Genesis 3. Somewhere in that time period, Satan fell. All right. In Job 38, you had the morning stars and you had the sons of God shouting for joy at the foundation of the earth. The creation of the earth, the sons of God, and the, the, the stars were shouting. They were singing and shouting for joy. 
you go through verses, uh, days one through six in Genesis, nothing about the, the angels being created. Nothing. God created the earth, the waters, the heavens, the stars. He created the fowls, the fishes, the cattle, the trees, the grass. Nothing about angels being created, right? Why? Because the angels were created before the earth. Use a little logic here. The angels were created before the earth. That's why the stars, the morning stars, and the sons of God could shout and sing for joy. Now, turn your Bible to Genesis 6. And I want you to think about something. Who was the father of the angels? God was. God was the father of the angels. Well, if he was their father, wouldn't they be called sons of God? Wouldn't they be called sons of God? I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, of course they would. And, they'll, and these evil satanic churches will do everything in their power to make you think the sons of God of Genesis 6 is anything but angels. Let's read this. Genesis 6 and verse 1. This is Satan's, one of his, probably his best kept secret that he absolutely hates the worst. And you know what? I don't care if you've got a lesbian witch pastorate, pastoress or whatever, priest, priestess I don't know what you call them. What do you, what do you call when, when you got a United Methodist Church or a, uh, when you got a woman that's a lesbian witch for a pastor or whatever you call them? I don't know what they call them. You know, I'm not concerned about those people. People that go to that church deserve to be deceived. What bothers me is the preachers, the pastors, that hold up a King James Bible and deny this truth. Because heresies have, heresies have consequences. Do the fallen angels have a seed line on the earth? Men of old ordained to destruction. Didn't we read that in Jude chapter 1? Men of old ordained to destruction. Now you know what that means. Genesis chapter 6 verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God do you know that my Jewish Bible, Jewish Publication Society Bible of 1917 actually says angels right there. It doesn't say sons. It doesn't say sons of God. It says angels, I believe. You know what? I'm not 100% sure. But I've seen Jewish Bibles where it translated that as angels. It says Ben Elohim. Elohim is God. Ben means son. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years." There were giants. You'll hear a lot about the Nephilim. Well, that's where they, they get that word from, giants. Because Goliath was a Nephilim. You know Goliath, David and Goliath? There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. See, this was before the, just before the flood. And there were giants in those days, and also after that, after the flood, people, Goliath and David, right? There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, 
and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Do you know that every culture in the world has legends of giants? Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, Paul Bunyan and Bess. Uh, the Japanese have them. The Chinese have them. India has them. South America has them. The American Indians have them. The Greeks. You ever heard of Cyclops? The Titans. Thor, the son of uh, Odin and a woman. How about Hercules? The son of, uh, who was he, Zeus and some woman? The god, one of the gods. Oh, yeah. That's what it's all about, people. Every, every, the, the Greeks, you had the Cyclops, you had ogres, uh, the Titans. All of these cultures had legends about giants because why when the sons of god came into the unto the daughters of men and they bare children of them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown you ever wonder why on the tv they always have uh thor and hercules but not samson samson was a mighty man but he was a somebody in the bible why does tv always promote thor and hercules and all these other what they called demigods. They were half God, half human. And then God says, well, I'm going to destroy man. I'm going to flood the earth. And then they had the flood of Noah. Why? Well, let's take a look. All right, think about this. Use a little logic. If in Genesis 6, if all the sons of God are just godly men, and all the daughters of, and all the daughters were, you know, wicked, uh, you know, and they try to tell you, well, you know, the godly men, those were the, 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 the sons of Seth, and then the daughters of men, well, those were the, the daughters of Cain. They were all wicked. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's think about that. In Genesis 6, if all the sons of God were the men who were righteous, so all the sons of God were all the men. Yeah, they're righteous. Yay! And the daughters of men and all the women, well, they're evil and wicked. So all the men are righteous. Yay! And all those women are evil and wicked. See what you, you women try to do to us? You know, so, so all the men were godly and all the women were evil, right? Check. Uh, does that make any sense? No. The sons of God were angels, people. So, but then with these evil churches, these satanic, evil, wicked, lying churches, will tell you, then the godly men and the wicked women got married, and believers and unbelievers had children who were giants. Since when do believers and unbelievers have children that are giants? Well, let's take a look in 2 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 20. Remember, and after, and after that, And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes. Four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. So do you see any unbelievers running around with six fingers and toes? Oh, and then, and then the Lord commanded all of them to be killed. Let's go to verse Chronicles 20, verse 4. And it came to pass after this that there arose war, 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 W-A-R, at Gezer with the Philistines. Remember Goliath? He was a Philistine. At which time, Sibichai the... Hushishite slew Sipi, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. 
2 Samuel 21, verse 18. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibichai the Hushanite slew Saf, which was of the sons of the giant. Hmm. First Chronicles 20, and verse 6. And yet again there was war, war, war at Gob. Where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of the giant. Uh, you know, they've been digging up skeletons of giants. They found one in Greece that was 35 foot long. So, what? Did God create these evil satanic giant being so King David could have target practice with Goliath? I mean, really, this is what these satanic churches that deny this truth want you to think. So God wanted war with the children of the wicked human women who did not believe? I mean, why didn't God say, oh, send some evangelists to these wicked women that don't believe so we can win them to Christ? No. War, people. God wanted war. And then they'll tell you, oh, well, psh, you know, they'll quote Mark 12 and verse 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, they're talking about the resurrection. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in, or, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels. See, see, that proves it. Angels can't have sex. We're going to be just like the angels but they leave out the two last words. For when they shall rise from the dead, neither they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Well, guess what? Not all the angels are in heaven. Remember, Satan cast took a third of the angels and cat, they cast them to the earth? That's right. You know, there's a big difference between two words can make a big difference. I owe you money. I do not owe you money. Two words. Do they mean the same thing? No. But are as the angels which are in heaven. Those deceivers always leave out those four last words. And they'll quote from a King James Bible. But your modern Bibles, they pre-twist those scriptures because they leave out those four last words. In heaven, the fallen angels are not in heaven as they were cast out. And it's funny how the deceivers always leave out those four meaningful words out of the Bible. So Nephilim is translated as giants in the King James Bible. Okay? So, when you reference Genesis 6 with Job 38, you can see that there are angels, fallen ones, who mated with women. Okay? So, Adam's children's, Adam's, okay, so in Job 38, the sons of God, angels shouted for joy when the earth was created. Because they were created before the earth. Adam didn't come until six days later after the earth was created. The earth was created, and on the sixth day, God took the dust of the earth, formed his body, breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Adam could not have shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. He didn't exist. But these liars will tell you that Genesis 6, the sons of God, oh, they're not angels, they're humans. They're those righteous men and they married those wicked women. And then they had giants who had six fingers and six toes. And yeah, right. Job 38, the sons of God, angels shouted for joy when the earth was created. Okay. But Adam, went, Adam man was not created until six days after the earth was made. So Adam's children are not sons of God until they're born again 
in the New Testament with faith in Christ. Only Adam himself was a son of God since God was his father. So these evil, wicked, dece deceiver churches, they ignore this and want us to believe this. So all the sons of God were the men who were righteous. The daughters of men were all the women who were wicked and evil. So all the men were godly and all the women were evil. Then the godly men and wicked women got married and believers and unbelievers had children who were giants. Uh, and then the Lord commanded they all be killed. Uh, yeah, that really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And, and this is what 90-something percent of all your churches teach today. You know, how can believers and unbelievers have children that are giants? And then why would God destroy the earth in a flood? Why didn't he send evangelists to preach to the unbelievers instead? Unless, of course, the fallen angels polluted the bloodline, the DNA of the line of humankind or Adam. Okay? So the sons of God had to be fallen angels. Is this the origin of the devils or demons? So, and if, if you believe the sons of God were just godly men, then please explain why Israel was commanded to kill all the Canaanites, and especially the giant Philistines, remember Goliath, who were of the Canaanites, and the flood of Noah. Turn to Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 5. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines, I will destroy, I will even destroy thee. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. Hmm. So please have your pastor that denies this, please explain with his wealth of Bible knowledge why God commanded Israel to exterminate all the Canaanites and the giant Philistines. Goliath and David. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 17. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, God commanding Israel. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Numbers 21 and verse 3. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Hormah. Why didn't the Lord tell Joshua to please send evangelists to tell them the ways of the Lord? No. God instead commanded they all be killed. Zechariah 14, verse 21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah, Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see if therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And yeah, I know, and uh, was it Matthew, I think, that Simon is called the Canaanite? Was he a Canaanite by bloodline? Or did he live in the land of Canaan? Think about that. What does it mean to be an American? Uh, are you an Indian? Are you white? Are you from black African? Are you Mexican? Are you from Japan, China? What does it mean to be an American now? In the 50s, it used to be if, if you were an American, you were considered a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Boy, that's, that's, that's not anymore, is it? So, all right, now, here's the deal. If you want to do, if you don't want to believe you see, the, uh, the line of the Canaanites, they're the ones that are involved in this iron kingdom. Matter of fact, do you know who taught the, the, the Japanese have been making steel 
from what I understand, for thousands of years. And if you research their legends, they'll say that the gods came down from the sky, intermarried with their women, and taught them how to make swords. And if you know anything about Japanese swords, I mean the real thing, not this fake garbage coming from China. They are absolutely incredible steel. Absolutely incredible. The difference between iron and steel is carbon. The fallen angels, according to the Japanese legend, the, the gods that came down from the sky, taught the Japanese how to make steel swords. Who am I to un not believe them? Where did they learn this technology? Where? They have uh, sand in Japan that's full of iron, iron, and they would take it and heat it up with carbon, melt it, and then they heat it up and they beat it. And every time you beat it with a, an, uh, a hammer, you knock off the impurities. You knock off all the impurities until that steel is 99 point something or other pure. And to this day, when they look at swords that Japan made five, six, seven hundred years ago, they are absolute metallurgists have looked at these swords mo with modern technology, and they're still to this day amazed at the quality of the steel. Absolutely amazed. Where do these people learn this from? I believe them. I really do. The gods came down and taught them how to make steel and make swords. The samurai, the ninja, where did they learn this technology? Do you know it was the Canaanites that first had iron? Yeah, Israel fought against the Canaanites and they had chariots of iron. Oh yeah. It made it very difficult. Though The chariots were the tanks of their day. The German blitzkrieg of World War II, the chariots. And they used to put swords on the outside of the wheels that would spin. And if, and if you weren't quick enough getting out of the way, the sword cut your legs off, or at least one of them. And I tell you what, it's pretty hard to fight a battle when you're missing one of your legs and you're bleeding to death. Here's something uh, somebody sent to me, some questions, and uh, why does God command all throughout the Old Testament the doctrine of being separated from the heathen nations in the land of Canaan, cursed for what he says is ham sodomy against his grandfather Noah. Uh, I don't know if that's true. He might have gone in unto his father's wife. I'm not sure. Well, usually when it says uh, your father's uncovering your father's nakedness, usually it's talking about uh, having sex with your father's wife. So either he had sex with his father's wife or whatever, or he committed sodomy. I don't know. But Ham was cursed. Period. Okay? And Israel was commanded to be separate from Ham. So, why did the Egyptians study the esoteric knowledge of the serpent? Egypt is a scriptural type of this world steeped according to to Luciferianism according to Egyptology. Uh, why does every secret society and every culture or people group have a form of a serpent they're in? You know, it's funny, the uh, Chinese, what is it, the Chinese always have that dragon festival. They take the dragon, you could see the, the dragon. And Western European dragons are more like a giant lizard, whereas 
Eastern dragons are more like a snake. But uh, you'll see, uh, go to YouTube, type in Chinese New Year, and you'll see the, the dragon, and they, they make a, a thing where a bunch of people will carry it around. Um, the Mayans had one, the Romans, the Greeks, Mesopotamians, all the Asiatic cultures, Africa, Europe. Levithians and dragons are mentioned as early as many years before Christ. But all these cultures are separated by hundreds to thousands of miles and centuries. You know, think about it. So, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Now, if you understand that there's a dual seed line on this earth, men of old ordained to this condemnation. Okay, let's read that again. Jude chapter 1. All right, Jude, Jude chapter 1, verse 6. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally are as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit twice twice dead, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own chain, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Wow. Let's go back to verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Does that make sense to you now? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. People, if you're still not sure, the sons of God of Genesis 6 were not fallen angels. I've got a 12 to 15 hour playlist that I'm going to put in the uh, description box and you can have at it. Uh, Mike Hoggard is one of the only people I know, uh, one of the only pastors I know, that preaches this truth. Matter of fact, I've got, uh, I've been called a heretic because I preach this stuff by supposed pastors of, that are King James only, and, you know, uh, those are the ones that I fear, well, concerned about. Because you got to wonder, why do they hide this truth of Satan? Because they want to hide, they want certain men to creep in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. 
ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They want to hide the satanic sea line. God did, they, Israel never destroyed all the Canaanites. Matter of fact, some of the tribes intermarried with them. Judah did. Judah did. He, he married his daughter-in-law, Tamar, I think her name was. But he also married a Canaanite or Hittite woman, I forget. Esau did. I think the tribe of Dan did. And Iskar, Iskakar, and Nebulun. A lot of them intermarried with the Canaanite line. God commanded them, don't do it. And they did it anyways. But if you, want, if you really want proof that the sons of God of Genesis 6 were fallen angels intermarrying, and that's how these giants came to be, Goliath and David... And you need more proof? Go to my playlist. And if you can listen to all that proof and all that evidence, well, believe whatever you want to believe. But the Iron Kingdom has reference to the, the, the Canaanites were the first ones. Now, I want to make a point, and I don't want to get into an argument with people. I really don't. There are those that say that Cain, Cain's line intermarried with the Canaanites, Cain and Canaan. And then there are other people, um, matter of fact, I don't know how much stock I would put into it, but the, uh, for example, the Talmud and a lot of the secret societies, the Luciferians, they claim that Cain was fathered by Satan and Eve. And if it happened in Genesis 3, well, then in Genesis 4, it says, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. Okay. If, if she wasn't already pregnant, um, it, that, would, that would be proof, right? But some people say that Cain was possessed of the devil, just like when Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. Maybe Cain was possessed of a devil. Maybe he was fathered by Satan. Or perhaps Cain, his line, intermarried with the Canaanites later. I don't know. Uh, you know, and then the people say, well, you know, Cain's line died out in the, uh, in the flood. You know, I don't know. The Bible doesn't go into a lot of details concerning the wicked line. It's just like the uh, the fallen angels. Okay? Angels are mentioned in the Bible. You're warned about them. But it doesn't go into a lot of detail. Because the Bible is the book of Adam and his family tree. Mankind. It's not the book about the angels. It's not the book about Cain and the Canaanites line. Okay? You know, it's like if I did a book on my family and I consider the Christians my family, my real family, I really do. You know, I might mention my father, my brother, my sister, my whatever, you know, and, and what have you. And I might mention some uh, people that are physically unrelated to me. But if I was doing a book on my physical family... You know, I, I might mention kids that I went to high school with or elementary school with, but the book wouldn't be about them. It'd be about my immediate met, uh, physical family. Well, that's what the Bible is, people. All right, so the first time iron is mentioned in the Bible, it's in relation to Cain's family. That's why I'm talking about all this stuff. Whether... But let's take a look real quick. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 22. Now you got to remember, in Genesis 4, Cain kills Abel, God casts him out, and says, you're not, you can't grow nothing. Okay? Matter of fact, let's take a look at that. All right. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. 
and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Isn't that interesting? I have gotten a man from the Lord. Hmm. Was Adam the Lord? Uh, no. Why would she say that? I have gotten a man from the Lord. Did she say, oh, God gave me a, let Adam, my husband, give me a, a, a son? Or did she really mean that? I have gotten a man from the Lord. I don't know. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering of the Lord. And an offering is not a sacrifice, people. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he, was, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. He was angry. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well... Shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. You know, I read something interesting in the Jewish Talmud. Yes, I studied the Jewish Talmud. You know, when I first came to the Lord, let me tell you a quick little story. When I first came to the Lord uh, around 1990, I thought, well, you know, why should I study the Old Testament from the Baptists? or the Methodists, or the Lutherans, or the Presbyterians. I says, I'm going to go study the Old Testament from the Jews. After all, I was always told, the Old Testament belongs to the Jews, right? So I went to the library, and I live in the third largest Jewish area in the United States, so we had a lot of Jewish books. A lot of them were in the reference section. You had to actually ask the librarian to go get it for you because you couldn't take it out. You couldn't check the book out. So I'm sitting there studying the Talmud. And uh, that's when I found out what they really believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, those of you that hear things about how the Talmud's full of filth, you probably only heard the half of it. Okay. But according to the Talmud, when it says that sin lieth at the door, they said that there was actually a devil named Sin. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if I believe that. But it's an interesting concept. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. Ooh, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother, against Abel his brother, and slew him. Slew Cain. He killed him. And here's uh, the Lord, the prosecuting attorney, coming. And I've heard it said that a good attorney will never ask a question that he doesn't already know the answer to. Verse 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now thou art, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. The curse of Cain coming. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her, unto thee her strength. In other words, when you till the ground, you ain't going to get nothing from the ground. The ground is cursed. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her, thee her strength. So Cain is cursed from farming. Take a look around you at all the different groups of people on the earth and see if you can find a certain group of people that cannot till the earth, that cannot farm. Seriously, take a look around. I'm not going to tell you who I think they are. You find out on your own. 
you're going to find out that there is a certain group of people on this earth that never plant trees. They always have somebody else go and plant a tree for Israel. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Yeah, plant a tree for Israel. I'm sorry. Verse, th thirteen, verse 12, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. A fugitive and a vagabond? In other words, you're not going to have a fixed habitation. You're going to be wandering around the earth. Hmm, I wonder who that fits. A fugitive and a vagabond that shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, Oh, boo-hoo! Oh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He kills his brother, and now he's going to be, he's, his punishment's greater than he can bear. He can't grow food, and he's going to be wandering, a, a fugitive and a vagabond. He's going to be a hobo, wandering to and fro. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Did you catch that? And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Where did we read about a mark? Hmm, the mark of the beast, 666? Hmm, is there a correlation? Is there a connection? Maybe. All right, so... Uh, let's see. All right, so, uh, should we keep reading or should we just... All right. Yeah, let's keep reading. We're going to go to verse 22. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. No, this is not the good Enoch that the Lord took. This is another Enoch. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch, and he builded a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Now, how does a husband or a wife have a son, and they build a city? You might build a house, maybe two houses, but do you build a city? Yeah, think about that. Think about that. I know some people teach that there were pre-Adamic beings oh, with two legs and two arms walking the earth. I don't know if I believe that. You know, uh, that's that's kind of out there, and I'm I'm not saying that at all. But but you know, it is something to think about. How do you build a city with just a husband and wife and a kid? You know. So Cain built the first city recorded in the Bible. Not good, right? And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch, and he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And under Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujalah, and Mahujalah begat Methuselah, and Methuselah begat Lamath. And Lamath took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ab... Abda, Abba, I don't know, bear Jabal, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Okay, so they, they dwelled in tents, they had cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zillah also bare Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain, that name if you talk to a Masonic, well, you can't talk to a Masonic Lodge member. They won't talk to you. But if you bought some books on the Lodge, you would find Tubal Cain's name mentioned prominently. Shh. 
She also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer, art, art, A R T I F I C E R, artificer, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. So Tubal Cain was an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. He, was a, he taught people how to make iron and brass. And not just like a blacksmith that would make horseshoes. He was an artificer. An artificer is somebody that's highly skilled in making ornamental things with all kind art. I mean, it was not only a science, it, he made it, he, it was an art. Tubal Cain heavily involved uh, that name in masonry. And he was an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. Iron. Do you know the Canaanites had swords of iron and chariots of iron? But the Israelites didn't. Nope, they sure didn't. Nope. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now, let's take a look at something else. Somebody asked me some questions once when uh, I questioned, you know, they told me that Cain was fathered by Satan. And they asked me some questions, and me being the inquisitive thing, you know, and I realized in Genesis 6, well, if the angels could have relations with the women, you know, it, it would be entirely possible for Satan to do it. I'm not saying I agree with them or I believe it or what have you, but somebody sent me these, he gave me some questions. Why is Cain not listed in the genealogy of Adam? And everybody says, well, you know, he was the first sinner. Okay, maybe. Maybe. But, you know, um, it makes me wonder, though. In 1 John 3, 12, you read this interesting verse. Not as Cain who was of not as Cain who not as Cain who was of that wicked one okay two words that are interesting of and wicked not as Cain who was of that wicked one now the word of if i tell you i am of American birth, that means I am from America, right? But it doesn't say that Cain followed Satan. It doesn't say he was like Satan. You know, it doesn't say that. It says of. And what are cakes? You know, like a birthday cake? What was a cake made of? Well, it's made of wheat flour and sugar and maybe chocolate, maybe vanilla, and, you know, baking soda, and, you know, other things. Um, you know, cakes are made of. I mean, cakes are not like flour. They don't follow flour, you know, of. That's a very interesting English word. And it says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Who was the wicked one? Is it Satan or is it Adam? Not as Cain who was of that Adam? Was Adam the wicked one? Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Hmm. Let's take a look at John chapter 8. All right, let's take a look at John chapter 8 verse 30. Jesus speaking. 
As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. See, there were Jews that believed on Jesus. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Weren't the Jews in bondage in Egypt? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Sin lieth at the door, right? And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth, for, uh, abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Well, uh, Judah was of Abraham's seed, and he married into the Canaanite line. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. A man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus say, said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Listen carefully. The most, I'm going to read to you what the Jewish Talmud says is the most anti Semitic verse in the Bible, in the New Testament. Jesus speaking to these Jews Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was a murderer from the beginning? Cain, right? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a lie, liar and the father of it. Who was a lie, the first liar? The serpent in the garden. It wasn't a talking snake. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Wow. Then saith the Jews, Oh, you have any doubt who Jesus is talking to here? Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. Wow. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. What makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say, 
that he is your God. Ye, yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Remember in Exodus when Moses was at the burning bush? Moses asked God, uh, Well, when the children of Israel are going to ask me what, what, what your name is, what am I going to tell them? He said, Tell them that I am hath sent you. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. The Jews knew exactly what he's saying here. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. You want a second witness? How about Matthew 23 and verse 29? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees are Jews, people. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Oh yeah, did you know Mystery Babylon killed the prophets? And yet Jesus saying, who killed the prophets here? And yet everybody will point to Rome. Rome is evil. Rome is wicked. But Rome didn't kill the prophets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. I didn't read Rome there, did you? Me either. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents. Wow, why is Jesus calling them serpents? Who, where else did we read about serpents? Hmm, Genesis 3 and Revelation 20, or what was it, Revelation 21? Uh, the old serpent, the devil and Satan. Oh, okay, yeah. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Listen carefully. Verse 35, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel, from the blood of righteous Abel, unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Wow. Jesus said that upon them would come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Barchias, son of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. That's some pretty heavy-duty stuff, huh? So, uh, you know, it's just some things to think about. I'm not saying 100% either way. But there is a seed line on this earth. There is indeed a righteous seed line and there's an unrighteous seed line. Let's take another 
witless. One more thing. Well, people, tell you what, um, I think we're going to close it out. Listen, I've got over 10 hours of studies on this uh, Sons of God satanic seed line thing, and I've got a couple posted videos of Mike Hogger too, and, um, you know, you, I'm telling you, there's a seed line, there's two seed lines on this earth. There's the seed of the devils, the fallen angels, and there's the seed of of um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And um, why did Jesus tell them they couldn't hear his words because, you know, they were of their father, the devil? Or are they the physical seed of the devil, or are they just possessed and serve Satan? You know, it's not a salvational issue, but I tell you what, if you're going to understand the Iron Kingdom and why some people cannot hear the words of God, this is it, people. All right, well, check the uh, description. I've got the uh, playlist so that you can, uh, if you want to go into the detail on this matter, you can. This is the deep stuff. This is the stuff that your denominational churches hide from believers. A lot of those people, they know what they're doing. All right, well, we're closing out. Uh, check the description for the playlist. Or check out the playlist, you know, click the link. Um, Ten hours of study, you'll be convinced if you have ears to hear and eyes to see. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube, people. They're going to boot me off. I've made a lot of enemies. So if I'm gone one day, what can I tell you? I did what I could with what I had. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, signing off. Amen.